Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Songwriter Spotlight. It's coming to you this evening from the West Tennessee Delta Heritage Center in Brownsville, Tennessee, home of the Sleepy John Estes Home, the West Tennessee Music Museum, and the Tina Turner Museum. We have a musical duo here for you tonight, and I want you to help me in welcoming Christine Conley and John McDowell. John, Christine, it is such a pleasure to have you with us tonight. Let's start with how long you've been playing music. Uh, me, for about 50 years. Well, and, and I actually started, uh, my mom says I picked out tunes on the piano when I was four years old. So I've been playing all my life, except I got crippling stage fright in high school and I stopped for decades. So I've just come back to it actually maybe 15 years ago. So Christine, I know you're not originally from this area. Right. What brought you to Memphis? Um, I was married to somebody who got a job as a reporter on the Memphis paper. Yeah. And he has since passed, but uh, I liked Memphis as soon as I moved here. It felt kind of felt like home as soon as I moved here. Yeah. Okay. If you like music, you have to like Memphis. So are you both multi-instrumentalist uh, or how does that work? Uh, she is. I, I kinda, I'm a strummer. I'm not a lead player in any type. So I strum a banjo and a ukulele and a guitar and, and a gulls. Resonator. Who? Resonator. Well, that's a guitar. Uh, right. and, but uh, yeah, and dulcimer. So yeah. That's multi. Yeah, but she can play things, so. Well, he's just, I don't know where he got that idea. I, uh, I studied music, so I remember a little bit about things, but uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's all day to day. Like the mandolin, I just picked that up. Some, some dear friends gave it to me. The Cuts Kids, my friend Lisa Lum and her brother and sister. So I uh, picked that up a little bit. I'm trying to learn a violin, but I'm not gonna inflict that on you today because I'm, I'm not good enough, that's really hard. But uh, yeah. You're both also songwriters. Let's talk a little bit about your songwriting and what inspires you. Mm, for me, it's usually love in some, some shape or form. Uh, it's basically, it's been sad songs a whole lot and then I met her and there's been a few happy songs. So, <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, it's inspiration. I can hear somebody like Bella Fleck and get inspired. Doc Watson can't ever play like him, but it inspires the heck out of me, you know. So yeah, it's it's usually um, love is a big one. Not only romantic love, but um, one of my most recent songs is about my niece. Um, but uh, yeah, deep feelings for loved ones. I suppose mostly, right? Yeah. yeah. So what's the first song y'all want to play for us this evening? Well, this is one that I wrote about the big guy. It's called um, Eye to Eye. And, uh, you know, he, he lives on a farm in Mississippi. He prefers to be on a farm. I am a city girl. Was, uh, you know, from Pittsburgh to Chicago to Memphis. And so this is about some of the differences. That... All right, you ready? Somehow we harmonize 
Tolkien and then Star Trek are your favorites. Indie films are what I like. I lean toward vegetarian and salads. You order anything that's fried. I love the noisy rhythm of a city. Crowded places make you run and hide. You're in the clouds, I'm underground, but somehow we see eye to eye. You sing your song, I sing mine, in different keys to different times. Somehow we harmonize, we see eye to eye. start playing together as musical partners first right so i'm, I'm you know not we played music first, yeah. but. but we didn't play music together first yeah. no so uh, <laughs> it seems like we've uh, just fallen into trying to write songs about each other she's probably written what six about me and oh probably more probably yeah. more and yeah. i've got four or five about her John, when did you start writing songs? Sorry. About 1974, I bought my first guitar and a friend started trying to teach me how to play and uh, I learned some chords from him. Uh, I never could learn the song that he was trying to teach me. I could learn the chords, so I just started making up my own. Started very simple with uh, two chord songs and worked my way all the way up to three chord songs and. I'm feeling very proud when I get to add maybe a seventh or, you know, make it like a four chord, so. <laughs> but it's been just fun. I, I'm very blessed and lucky to have friends that are great musicians, Greg Yarbrough, Rick Malco. They're, they're just fantastic, and uh, they're tolerant of me. <laughs> and they've let me play along behind them all these years. It's really been fun. You said to me earlier that you really couldn't help it, that the songs just happened. They come to me. I don't really sit down to write. She can sit down and try to think. So I just, if it doesn't come to me, it doesn't happen, really. It's just, and they come to me when I'm driving or, it, I never know. I just never know. It's, it's kind of fun in that regard, but then I go through several long dry spouts that I don't like. It, it is a gift, I guess, for me, because I don't try, and she can tell you that. <laughs> well, what about the next song you're going to do? How did it come to you? Well, this is a double inspiration. I, I mentioned Bella Fleck earlier. I was watching him on PBS, and uh, he moves his fingers up and down the neck so much that I get dizzy watching him. And, and I'm, like I said, I'm a strummer, so I started trying to make my fingers move. And then started thinking of words about her. So, this is kind of a, a Bella teeny inspiration. Oh, yeah, my nickname is Teeny. <laughs> yeah, her my, my name's Teeny. Yeah. Uh, Sophie gave me that name, so it's Teeny. So, anyway, this, this is called uh, Spinning Round and Round. That's, uh, and I get to play the eggs. 
And she's a professional egg hey. player, see? <laughs> Baby's got my head spinning round and round. She's got a kind of loving that can't be found. Once in a lifetime, if you know what I mean. She's got a kind of loving like I've never seen. Baby's got my head spinning round and round. Like my head spinning round Now every time we touch, it's like in a dream. Baby's got a skin like milk and cream. Mama. Baby's got a skin like milk and cream I'm gonna try to love her each and every night I'm gonna try to love her with all my might Cause baby's got my head spinning round and round Got my head spinning round and round Yeah, baby's got my head spinning round and round Got my head spinning round and round It's really nice that you're able to inspire each other so much. So tell me a little more about where your next song comes from. Yeah, this is a song we co-wrote. Mm -hmm. Started it in a car on the way home from Florida and yeah. finished it at home sometime yeah. later. Right. So I should just go into it? Okay. It's um, called Satisfaction Guaranteed. I've been crying in the kitchen, which not loaned to my heart. Instead of giving it away, as you was torn it apart. You borrowed it at first. I'd have known right away that I'd get it back someday. And I'd know just what to say. Did you get what you need? When you find for then you learn No deposit on return No matter how low I feel 
worry about my heart Cause I've written in that part Satisfaction guaranteed Did you get what you need? Read the fine print and you'll learn Know the positive of my turn Satisfaction guaranteed Did you get what you need? What genre of music do you consider yourself a student of? Well, I started out in the folk era. I loved Bob Dylan, Joan Baez, uh, Doc Watson, uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Nowadays, they call the same music Americana. So for me, it should be folk Americana, I'd say. Yeah, pretty much a country Americana for me. Yeah. We were talking earlier about music circles. Let's talk a little more about that. Oh gosh, for seven or eight years, I started out at a place called Cammy's. Uh, just a group of friends would come. We'd eat pizza and drink beer. Never get paid. We always pay for our food, and we always. <laughs> and that way, in a way, we didn't have to worry about copyright stuff. We weren't performing, we were just having a party. And that's the way I like it. I'm not, again, I'm not a performer, I just like playing. And so uh, we did Cammy's until she closed up that store and then we went to Stone Soup in Memphis and we played there every Saturday night. Uh, every other Saturday? Every other Saturday night for three years, four years. How many years has it been? Four, so, maybe three to four. Yeah. Three or four years and then the pandemic hit and. We've been sitting at home for two years now, and uh, so we're going to try to crank it up again here pretty soon. So, speaking of the pandemic, d did that affect your songwriting in any way? Were you writing more, writing less? Um, I only wrote one song during this yeah, time I, of the I pandemic. I don't yeah. think I've written any. Yeah. No. Um, and it comes, you, know, you were saying before, it comes in waves. I, I'm not sure what effect it had on it. Uh, it's, it affected everything. I mean, it made everything seem too hard. So <laughs> your music circles and when you're with your friends and you're playing, how does that feed into your songwriting? Oh gosh, the ideas you get as far as music. I learned something on an instrument almost every time I'm around Craig or Rick. I mean, it, they play any kind of genre, anything you want, they play it. So I uh, pick up things on the instrument that help me write, for me, mostly. Um, I, not specifically for writing, but writing and playing, I guess. I, as John's saying, some of these people are so good, it's daunting, but I always take it as a challenge. I always hear these like, I'm glad that it works that way, that my, I just, that's what happens. Because I hear it and I could go, oh, I'll never play again. But uh, I, instead, I go, oh, wow, okay, I gotta get better and then just start working on something new. So it's cool. But we are sure are looking forward to the song circles starting back up. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Uh, so we got another song that she wrote about me, I think. Well, this is something, uh, I don't know if this was on tape, but at one point he said it's all her fault. He used to say, when things were going really well, he would say this kind of twisted thing. He'd say, oh, it's all your fault. And uh, finally I said, well, if you're not going to write, oh, if you're not going to write this song, I am. So, so this is, it's all your fault. And it's, and it's fun um, when we sing it out with friends. It doesn't even have to be friends, but there's a clear place in the chorus where you can sing along. If you feel, feel free so to sing moved, along. yeah. Chair. How long did you plan to leave it there? Why did you come over at all? Why'd you have to call? Now I'm staring into space, a silly little smile on my face. When you come and get back your hat, you're gonna get much more than that. Oh, mm -hmm. 
your father. All your father. All your father. All your father. Nothing more to say. Does the other one just cringe? <laughs> she does, I don't. <laughs> I do? <laughs> well, uh, as you can tell, her songwriting is a lot more in depth to me. In depth? I, I, I'm a real simple person and she has changes and oh, stuff. Oh, he, he used to get on my case about having too many chords. Oh in my songs. gosh, she writes songs with six and seven chords in it and it's like. <laughs> Girl, my brain only goes to three. <laughs> John, you had a recording studio for a while. Let's talk about that a little bit. Well, it was Memphis Sound Productions on Beale Street. Uh, we, we were in the old Tempo's restaurant building there. And, uh, so anyway, the uh, uh, Tin Roof is in the building right now. They're, they're renting it. But we recorded uh, all sorts of things. It was really kind of crazy. Uh, we did the soundtrack for uh, Great Balls of Fire. Ross Rice's hands in the movie. When you see hands, they're Ross Rice's local musician there. Uh, like I said, ZZ Top, the Recycler album, broke all kinds of records. Uh, that was exciting as crud. Uh, I enjoyed the heck out of that. B.B. King, one of the nicest people you ever meet in your life. So it was really pretty exciting. Uh, a recording studio, though, is a hard way to make a living. <laughs> is there somewhere online that folks could hear more of your music? Well, I have, um, I recorded an EP a few years ago at Farmhouse Studios with Brian Hayes, but I never did anything with it, but you can hear it on my website, christine Conley. Dot com, I think, or you can look up Christine Conley Art and Music, and it's mostly art. I used to be a visual artist, and so it's a lot of, of painting and installations and various things, drawings, but then there's a music section too. What's the next song you're going to play for us? Well, actually, the song I had in mind, Tall Grass, was written because I was walking through Tall Grass, and I wished I had walked through the shorter grass, but in life, you know, that's not you want to go the path less travel. So one of my uh, old timey sounding songs, people remark on how it sounds old timey. Ready? Yeah. 
I should have won. Is it all Chris? I should have chosen pathless travel. I should have gone down that higher way. Instead, I chose. as I have, and I hope you'll join us again in two weeks when we spotlight another songwriter. Christine, John, it has been such a pleasure to have you here. You are so much fun. Thank you. And tell me a little bit about the song that you're going to play us out on. Okay, we mentioned Florida. that we wrote a song coming back from the Keys, mm -hmm. and this was a song that I wrote about the Keys. So um, for my uh, 70th birthday, I wanted my uh, sons to gather with us in the uh, Florida Keys. None of us have, had ever been there. <coughs> I figured, you know, that's a big, big birthday, so I can make a demand here. So we, we all met there. It was amazing. And I just took a lot of notes as we were um, driving there about, you know, the azaleas and the... Um, um, red buds and jasmine through the pine trees and and so uh, a lot of these things just came up and ended up being part of the song so. Sí, sí. 
timely calls us now. Second day on the road. Just gonna get through my ailing rush out and pay 